I would believe that there are ways and means of communicating um, right up to the end. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of work in finding out. It's taking that one minute and being really, um, really uh, um, available really available so it's like you know everybody's busy so it's taking that one minute and sitting down and looking the person in the eye and you know sometimes they're sad sad isn't going to kill any of us tears aren't going to kill any of us but these are the emotions of that person's you know where they're at in the moment and so i think to acknowledge i see you're sad um do you want to tell me about it or you know they'll say, I want to talk to somebody maybe who's dead. You don't have to keep telling them they're, they're not, they're dead and I told you they're dead and we buried them and all the rest of it, but maybe redirect or, you know, tell me about that person or, you know, what did you used to do with that person? Because in dementia, and I'm not a medic here, but um, I know if you were to ask me stuff that went on years ago, I would answer you like that. You asked me what I did yesterday, I'd probably have to look at my diary. So. If you go back to the person and say, gosh, they were a great singer, do you remember the songs they used to sing? Chances are that um, you bring them back, A, probably to a happier place. But then again, it goes back to the person with dementia in that you've kind of distracted them. You know, if they're agitated, if they're angry, you know, instead of kind of saying, you know, oh, well, you're fed and watered and bathed and it's like, you know, I see you're cross, I see you're angry, like, you know, what can I do? Can you tell me about it? So like asking kind of maybe open-ended questions so that you're bringing that person and it's not about game playing or deceiving them, it's about recognizing that our minds are no longer the same as before dementia.